skeleton. Still alive. A map of the Sword Coast. My people have scouted well beyond the temple. Okay, we're back, and this time I'm gonna try to draw them in. What's next, I wonder? One true way. Undetected. I am death. Sentry! Into the spot! Hitaka! Be 
Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna cast uh, Cloud of Daggers on the door. Better get to it. Holy shit, we escaped. I don't think I told us to go to camp, but uh, okay, sure. Supreme Kithrak, has Vlakid sent you to slay me with your own blade? I've not come to kill you, Lazel. I've come to aid you. Don't trust him. Skakek Kir Gith Shabeleth. My blade rests. Mother Gith compels you to listen. I know you carry the astral prism, Lazar. Within it lies the seed of Vlakith's demise, and I intend to help you bring it to fruition. Vlakith's demise? Shkaketh! I should run you through for suggesting it. If they have not said, they must have good reason, and I won't be the one to betray them. But the one inside's chosen you as an ally protects you with their power. That very power will be the end of Vlakith's tyranny. The Prism's tenant must be let loose. I've sought their freedom for eons. When the Prism went missing, I feared the worst. Instead, you've granted the opportunity I've so long awaited. All that remains is the key that unchains them. And I've found someone who I believe can provide it. Bring the prism to Boulder's Gate. I'll be waiting in a taproom called Shares's Caress. That is where we decide the fate of my people. Lazel, together we will break our chains and be Vlakith's slaves no longer. I am no slave, she's still Kithrak. The Undying Queen is my freedom. It is she who will purify me and she who will ascend me. Lies, Lazel, every last one. There is no purification, no ascension. The Zaith Isk does not purify, it extracts memory and kills the infected. Nor does the Lich Queen glorify the ascended. She feeds on most all of them to grow her power and pursue godhood. 
madness. He flood me with this... this heresy. I... I will hear no more of it. I served Flacketh the whole of my life. Learned her words, fought her battles, yet she names me her Sharlak. Your words carry truth. I will meet you in Baldur's Gate. Do not make me regret it. Lazel, I see Talakma gear in you. Sister in freedom. Together we will be our people's light. Take this. It is a Quanith, a psionic detector. The Queen's warriors hunt you. The Quanith will sound you out when you come near their portals. Hear its cry and prepare for battle or slip away. I should go. Vlacketh's gaze pierces the seas and skies. She believes me loyal, and I can't afford her mistrust. Keep the astral prism close. Let no one take it from you. Slay any who try. Now to Baldur's Gate. I'll be waiting, Lazel. Vlakith cast Sivim Krath Crashet. Only in Vlakith may we find light. These were the first words I ever read on Tirsu Slate. But they are no mere aphorism. They are law. They are creed. The root from which the Ten Thousand Protocols stem. Forsake one protocol, and forsake Vlakith. Forsake Vlakith, and be the blood and meat which sates her dragons. If Vos speaks true, if Ascension is a lie, if Tadpole Purification is a fairy tale, then I have not sinned against Flakith. She has sinned against me. I don't know. I can't know. And that drives me mad. At first, I thought them an illithid deception, a trick of the Tadpole. But the dream figure is real. It lives in the prism. Vos believes they are the seed of Vlacketh's demise and the agent of Githyanki freedom. And I believe he may be right. I'd never thought Vlacketh a tyrant or me as a vassal. She was the source of my might and I the envoy of her will. A warrior, a champion, a destroyer. But if Voss is right, and Vlacketh consumes the Ascended to gain power, then I am no destroyer. I am mere livestock, bred to be harvested and devoured. Every Githyanki is a slave with a singular purpose. Not to cull the Geich, not to prevent their grand design, but to raise Vlacketh to true godhood. Ascension is a young Githyanki's greatest honor. Long ago, the Geich enslaved my people. They dominated our minds and bred us for war, until Great Mother Gith took a hammer to our bonds. From the day of our hatching, young Gith have one purpose, to train hard enough to slay a Geich and take its head. Then, we speak the rite of Ascension, and a red dragon comes to fly us to Vlacketh in Tunarath, City of Death. We are honored with an eternal home in the Astral, celebrated for our victory. We are ascended. Or so I believed. Yes, I'd like time to think. We'll meet Kithrak Voss at Charesse's Caress in Baldur's Gate. Until then, be vigilant. Vlacket's eyes are upon us.
My own Savage would never have threatened a youngling. A waste of time and energy. The pupils themselves culled the weak from their ranks. I myself felled four of my own classmates once Kalir had a hundred times circled Tyrell. Of course. My people have no use for cowards. Every trainee that I slayed was either too weak to withstand the lessons, or was cocky enough to pick a fight they could never win. They underestimated me, so they paid the price. The Githyanki are only as powerful as their weakest warrior. Jaquith de Venzir, the termination of the frail, strengthens us. Perhaps, if I'm in need of relief. Until then, I'll enjoy watching you squirm from the anticipation of it. Okay, we're back in here. Yeah, I think there's some Noxus, Noxus rooms that I can't see. left to trap up. There, in the cage. You come to my home, interfere in my business, and now have the gall to face me in the heart of my lair. You petulant bollocks! I'll rip your I not your asshole! I'll use your blood to spice my stew! I'll keep you alive until I've sucked the marrow from your bones! And then I'll bring you back and do it all over again! Just get out of here! Please!
Uh, wait just a tick. Killing me is a waste of time. I'll find a way to return. Always have, always will. But it's unpleasant. So how about we be civilized about this, hmm? I have something you want. I knew I liked you, dearie. Let me leave with the girl, and I'll give you power. You want to be stronger, tougher, smarter, done. Anything is possible. Just let me keep the girl and her babe. Trading some wealth we just met for impossible power. It's a fine deal. It's your choice, sweetness. You greedy little ballocks. Fine. Here. I'll not soon forget this sweetness. You have my word. But the deal? What about my husband? What happens to him? Deal's off, you dumb cow. And you've her to thank for it. Not that it matters. I'll find another just as plump and ripe. I can set up shop elsewhere. People always need lotions and potions. Oh, don't act like you won't miss me. Bye-bye, Petal. So, because all of our stats are even except for strength, might as well pick that one. Wish I had a bag of holding. Don't waste a step. You bastard! You ruined it! You ruined everything! You want thanks? A slap is all you deserve. Ethel was going to bring my husband back. Back from the dead. And now I'll never see him again. Because of you! She would have. I had everything figured out. Just a bit longer and my child would have been born. And all this, all this would have been over. Don't judge me. I have nothing. My baby would have been raised in rags. Auntie Ethel promised to give this child a good life. Teach them magic even. More than I could have done. Well, I didn't bloody ask you, did I? I didn't ask for any of this. I just want his corner back. Now I have to drag his corpse back home, coughing and all, because a goddamn grave is the closest I'll get to seeing him again. I hope you're happy. Here we go again. For him, my pigeon. He's mine. Um, Pidge. Keep him safe. Listen to him coo. Till I get hungry or some such. What's it to ya? Then catch one on your own. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. More than you got, mate. I likes him. But, um, how much do 
you got? You funning? Pity don't take a craw craw for that much. Hey! I could buy a Bagoonian pigeon for that much! Here's the key. Pigeon's all yours. I guarantee the story of your daring Volo Themp Geda, realm renowned author, author, and tastemaker at your service. Once I've written you into one of my books, there won't be a tavern in Feru you can enter without receiving a hero's welcome. We mustn't tarry, but I hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? Why? By design, my friend. How better to learn the ways of a people than to live among them? I dare say the experiment has proven most fruitful, too. I'd be happy to share my findings. Once we've found somewhere safe to parley. Smashing! Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast is clear. See you soon, my friend. I simply can't wait to pick your brain! So, let's go back to camp for now. <laughs> ah, my good fellow! Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flares, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. As a matter of fact, I do. But why do you? That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flare by now. You? Infected by a mind flare? Oh, ridiculous! Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh! Dear sweet gods! I mean, yes. I suppose I can. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. Will Voss have to show for himself when we catch up with him, I wonder? His intelligence may yet prove the key to unlocking the artifact's secrets. We should ensure we follow up when we reach Baldur's Gate. With pleasure. Lead on. <laughs> That's curious. Walk in the way of dawn, for the thunder cannot protect you where the light doth not reach. What's up for discussion? <laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on 
your behalf. Mm, endure an hour's worth of exposition to my presence, and you may well come to consider a different sort of honorific with which to chronicle the occasion. But uh, until then, your sentiment is well received. Yes, yes, yes. Be that as it may, you said you came all this way on my behalf, did you not? For what purpose? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Bordity washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you will begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get, get out with it? And a great kindness that would be. See, Gale, even in these barren parts, the art of hospitality begets inspired new works. If only one keeps up the practice. Oh, for the love of... Uh, this way, then. Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh. Nigh on 13 centuries old, and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow and see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. A wise choice. Better to indulge your curiosity than Elminster's appetite. Mmm, yes, what a delightful wedge of old as Turin that was. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Can you make any more food puns? Alminster. Right. Um, you see, I um. Well, that is to say, Gale, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Thank you. For that most considerate reminder. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistral would consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistral is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the Absolute, that most insidious of evils. Alas, the creature that afflicts you, the ill-begotten magic that it weaves, is inextricably conjoined with both the greater purpose and the greater master that it serves. You must know that the Absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The Orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to 
stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. And need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky-strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. Brave or stupid. I've proved myself the latter too many times where she's concerned. For Mistra to have sent him. The severity of her bidding could not be clearer. Or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling. To realize how little of it one might have left. Of course. We offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. I've no doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. But to take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have. And only I can wield it. If there was, I'm sure the goddess of magic and the greatest wizard who ever lived would have identified it. But alas. Only one solution is offered. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Hmm. Then I suppose there is nothing more to be done but find the heart of the Absolute and stop its beating. <laughs>